When you're in the state of alpha, your blood flow to the brain improves. If you don't have good flow to your brain, you can have many things go wrong. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, bad mood, uh, paranoia, anxiety, etc. So you don't want to lose alpha as you get older. You want to maintain alpha and preferably increase it by training. This would profoundly improve your immune function as well. Please have a body, Carol here. Today I have some notes that I took while listening to a podcast called Coast to Coast AM Biofeedback. Uh, Raising Consciousness and More, Dr. James Hart. Now, Dr. James Hart, you might have heard of him. He's in charge of this BioCybernoid Institute. But it's where you go there and you pay, I guess you pay money, and then, and then for, for seven days, they hook you up every day with electrodes all over your brain and you do biofeedback on your brain. And it turns out that our brains and our hearts are the strongest organs that emit an electromagnetic field. Now, why would we emit an electromagnetic field from our body? What's the physics of that? Well, blood is a charged liquid, and when you have blood flowing, you have a charged entity that moves. And so if you've ever taken elementary physics, you know that if you have a moving charge, such as an electron flowing down a wire, it generates a, an electromagnetic field around it. And so our heart is the biggest area in our body that's like pumping, pumping, and it's like this rhythmic movement, so you're going to get a rhythmic electromagnetic field emerging from that phenomenon that uh, goes outward. And that is, it permeates the space around you. And scientific measurements have shown that you can measure, if you're in, say, a, a room that is shielded so that your equipment can pick up sensitive fields and you put two people in that room 50 feet apart the heart way the heart sourced electromagnetic field which contains in it a lot of information heart rate variability and uh, heart rate as a function of time can be picked up by the person 50 feet away and that heart information is seen in their brain waves. And um, they've done a lot more than just that kind of testing. They find that you can, um, if you know someone really well and you measure their brain waves and their gut uh, reactivity, and you can find that even if they're separated by a wall, they can, if one of them gets upset as measured by their gut reactivity, then the other one can sense that. And it's you call it ESP, but um, now that you know, now that science is understanding what's really going on, we don't have to call it ESP anymore. It's just a phenomenon that we have the ability to pick up the electromagnetic fields of other people, and it may be subconscious, but if it's in your brain waves, you know, if, if a pattern is in your brain waves that wouldn't otherwise be there because it matches the pattern of this other person, you know, you're that's that's proof that you're picking up their brain waves it has to be through the air. So. The electromagnetic field. <laughs> now, um, our brain also emits a field depending on the pattern of the firings of the neurons. And so, if you have neurons firing, it's like a current going through. Um, because if you have nerves firing, they're sending a current to another synapse, which then sends a current to the next one. You know, it's like a current going through a wire. And so, again, it's moving charge. And so, that emits. Not as strong as the heart, but still the second strongest field in the body that's emitted. It's the electromagnetic field that's emitted from the brain. And um, if you have chaotic thoughts, your um, the, the, the electrodes will pick up a certain pattern of electromagnetic activity, depending on where you place it on the scalp, where the electrode is on the scalp. And if you're in deep meditation and all your brain waves are firing together, you're going to get a huge coherent waveform that comes out of your brain and every spot will be equal, you know? So that's like two extremes. And what we want to do as human beings to feel good, 
is to learn how to make our brain more synchronous and less chaotic. That tends to make us feel good, especially if they're our nerve firings are synchronized in the right places and at the right frequency. So the frequencies of interest to human beings are the slowest delta, which we have in deepest sleep, and that's like from 1 to, I think it's 5, 4 or 5 hertz, and then theta is the next, that's when you're just falling asleep, and that's like well, it's kind of subjective, but like four, two, three, four hertz up to about 10 or 9 or 10, that's the theta. And then 10 to 14 is alpha. And that's the calm and alert state that is um, correlated with health and happiness, especially if you can generate this yourself. And then above that is beta, which is about, I think it's 14 to 12. 20 would be the high beta. And that's where you're actively thinking and talking and you're excited and oh, you're watching a movie and all this. And then above that is gamma. And the gamma waves can be generated by, um, if you're a very highly trained meditator and you, you slow down and you go into the alpha and you get all centered and then you start uh, practicing what they call intention or prayer where you really intend for something to happen, or you pray for someone's well-being, and you really put all your attention into it, then you can get your brains, your brain to fire in the gamma brainwave frequencies. And those are also healthy, but it's not a state that you're in all the time. It's just, you know, while you're in your one hour of intense prayer, you would be in the gamma. That's where the gamma is. But talking mostly about alpha and um, I'm going to just go through my notes and I hope that you find this useful um, this is for my own personal journaling and I will be watching this video of myself talking to remind myself of this this is my way of documenting my notes because there I had to write this with my left hand because I had the cat on my right hand and I wanted to remember the idea so I thought well I'll just try writing with my left hand <laughs> it's kind of funny but the phrase that made me want to even take notes was that when this Dr. James Hart was talking in the video, he said, if I double my, well, these are my words, but I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing what he said. If I merely double my daily baseline alpha in the 10 to 14 hertz range of my brain, then my life reality is profoundly altered. And he was talking about people that maybe have, uh, they feel hectic a lot, like most Aspies do in this chaotic world. We feel very hectic most of the time when we're out and about. And if we can learn or train our brains to go into alpha, just to merely double the amount of alpha brainwaves in our, I guess, our readings, if you were to have electrodes hooked up to your head, um, then you will have a profoundly altered reality. And if you have a lot of alpha, okay, like for example, this Dr. James Hart, when he first did EEG bowel feedback, he was having he was having the procedure done to him. And it's not really a procedure that you do. You're training your brain. You're not imposing anything onto your brain. You're merely looking on a computer screen at your current brainwave situation. And then you, if you have an alpha that, whenever you have an alpha brainwave, a little red bar goes up, and what you try to do is make that bar go higher. And um, when the when the bar goes higher, that's feedback to you that oh, you're doing it right. So let's make it go even more higher and, and even more higher. And so then you you learn to raise that bar. What does that feel like? That is uh, the feeling that you want to elicit when you're out and about. And what do you have to do to get that? Uh, and Yogananda teaches a breathing exercise that helps you increase alpha, for example. And that's what we'll talk about today. I talked about it in one other video. It's, um, it's just a common breathing te technique that you inhale to a count of five, hold to a count of five, exhale to a count of five, and hold to a count of five. And then you repeat over and over and over for your 20-minute meditation. And you continue to focus on the breath. This is one method of calming the mind, uh, getting stability in your physiology by 
um, you know, getting rid of excess carbon dioxide and, and, and getting plenty of oxygen in there, and that just calms you down. You're, um, you're not going to be doing shallow breathing because you're consciously controlling your breathing, for example. There's other methods where you actually just watch your breathing, but this is actually to where you consciously learn to control your breathing. And um, it's not easy for everyone. For example, even now when I do that exercise, I find that I yawn a lot. But if I continue doing it and get past the yawning stage, which may take 10 minutes, um, then I'm past it and then I can continue breathing exercise. It's just one of my little quirks. Um, so, um, moving on to my notes, there's a pattern of EEG that allows one to see astral beings. Isn't that interesting? He didn't say what that pattern was, but um, he called astral beings like uh, angels or spirit gods or voices, and a lot of people can see or hear beings, and they don't tell anyone because they think, oh, they're going to think I'm schizophrenic or something, but um, it's, it's a real common phenomenon for a lot of people. Um, like, for example, for me, I uh, sometimes, if I get quiet and ask, you know, the universe, cosmind, whatever, uh, please help me figure this problem out. I might actually hear kind of, I don't hear it, it's just a voice that's there that I can, you know, it's kind of like if you're a writer of a story and you're in the zone, it just kind of flows through your hand. And you, you can write out the story and it just comes to you. And it's almost like you're making it up on the fly, whatever, however you want to label it. But a lot of people feel like it's like an external voice and it's amazing. It's like those are where the greatest ideas come from. Or you might close your eyes and see a vision behind your closed eyes, like maybe because you're in your theta hypnagogic state, so you can almost see dreamlike visions. I, I can do that in the dark. These are, uh, there's a certain pattern of EEG that, that identifies that. Anyway, I'm just saying, I thought that was interesting. Um, it kind of got me really interested in the whole phenomenon. Now, I'm not new to biofeedback. I actually, at one point, bought several thousand dollars worth of biofeedback equipment. Um, this was in 2001, so quite a while back. And I did a lot of training using my P4 computer. And I learned um, how to increase theta. Um, turns out that I'm, I have a lot of theta in my baseline. And that's real common, I believe, for um, SB people to have a lot of theta. That's very creative and idea generating and a problem solving mode. And, um, but I didn't have very much alpha. And I had trouble training in alpha. I need to return to, to this and learn how to do alpha now. I'm inspired. But um, when, I, when I trained for theta, what I did when I set it up was my feedback was I wanted to close my eyes so I couldn't look at a red bar going up. So I changed it to where I could hear tones, musical tones. And when my theta went uh, higher and higher, the complexity of the chord playing would increase. So if I got a little theta, there'd be like a C, a C note. And then a little bit more theta, I would add the E. That's the third of a chord. And then I would add a G after I got more theta. And then if I got more, I would add the B. That's the seventh of the chord. And then all of a sudden you have this rich major chord. And then more theta, I add another C, the octave, and then I would add D, that's the ninth, and then I might add uh, either a, I can't remember what goes with it, I might have added a fourth, I mean an 11, but I think sharp, it was a sharp 11, but be that as it may, um, it, it got very, very rich, and the only way that I could perform this biofeedback and get the full thick chord was, uh, it was, it was very challenging. I had to relax every effing muscle in my body, even my eyelashes. I mean, it was it's a challenge to do that, but it felt really good. And I would just really have to concentrate for a long, long, long time, like maybe 20 minutes, and completely relax, almost to like where I was out of my body almost, because I, I didn't have any tension anywhere. And... Um, uh, for me, that's very challenging to do that, and I worked pretty hard to get there. 
And, um, wow. Then I lent the equipment to someone because I wasn't using it, but I wanted it. <laughs> but then they moved, and I don't know where they moved to, and I lost my equipment. But that's okay because I know they're putting it to good use. So that's, that's good. So anyway, I'll have to get some more equipment and, and continue that work <laughs> one day. But I really want to increase my alpha. I'm going to move on now to um, the part where... Um, I thought it was really interesting that, um, well, first of all, there's different uh, spots on your head that people that do EEG biofeedback uh, have conventions, and C3 is like top, left, central, so I think it's about right there, and they've correlated a lot of things with the different uh, brain positions or head positions, and um, it turns out that if you can increase the alpha brain waves in the C3 area, that's correlated with lessening paranoia. So if you have a, a patient that goes to Jim's Hart's clinic and they are paranoid, they're just always paranoid, then he would train them to increase the, the alpha in the left C3. And that is correlated with lower paranoia, as I said. Now, um, Alpha increasing anywhere in the head is correlated with lessening your anxiety. So that's kind of my goal. I want to lessen my anxiety. So I want alpha to just increase everywhere, non, and not any specific position. And um, I don't know if you're interested in this, but psycho, psychosthenia and schizophrenia are correlated with um, not enough alpha in the left or the right occipital lobe. And so if you can increase alpha in the left or right occipital lobes, you will decrease your schizophrenic tendencies and your uh, psychosthenia tendencies, for those of you that are interested in that. So um, <clears throat> schizophrenia type vibes and other bad vibes could be coming from the outside. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're generating those, but you might be picking up the brain waves or the heart patterns of other people around you, or it could be from uh, equipment that's emitting some kind of a dirty electricity or other high electromagnetic fields like your phone. So um, we're susceptible to all the electromagnetic fields around us. And I think the reason we feel so good when we go out in nature is because the electromagnetic fields that are are absent. They're not, uh, you know, the trees may have them, but they'll probably be very calming ones. So uh, telepathic exchanges occur during some of the programs that they use in the biosophronautic shared feedback program where they have two people doing feedback together they can actually help, help induce telepathic exchanges between the people. I thought that was really fascinating but it's not something that I'm going to pursue myself because I'm not necessarily as interested in telepathy because I already do that. <laughs> I don't need to increase that uh, as I am interested in calming my anxiety. So. Is EEG biofeedback enough to allow me to be an alpha even when I'm not alone? For example, when I'm alone and I have a one mile radius around me where there's no people, I can let my guard down and feel safe. And even if I'm not trying, I, I, you know, if there's people around, I, I can just sense it. I, I can't seem to relax unless I have that one mile radius around me. That's approximate. Maybe it's not quite a mile, but... Uh, or if I'm shielded by trees, maybe then that diameter could get smaller. Trees are full of water and things that dampen electromagnetic fields, so that seems to help me if I go out into a small forest, for example. Um, so then moving on. Uh, I also know that um, I, I think since I'm a 
I call it a theta knot. That means somebody that's predominantly in theta. Um, whenever I talk to a certain person, it's a relative. And it's, it's always the same. Whenever I talk to him, no matter what mood I'm in or anything, he starts to yawn. And I finally realized that he, since I have genetic relation to this person, <laughs> I'm sure he um, has some of the same brain waves that I have. And I think that I'm somehow activating his theta. You know, like we're resonating in theta. So whenever he hears my voice, he, he, he entrains to me, and then he goes into theta and starts to yawn. So whenever I call him up, it's like, oh, he starts yawning and he goes, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, Carol, I can't help it, I'm just yawning. And it's like, now I know, it's like he's entraining to my theta and I'm causing him to yawn. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that, but whatever. Um, so I always keep my conversations very short with this gentleman. So um, not only uh, EEG and HRV affect people around us and ourselves, but also sounds. So, if you're sensitive, like I am, you know, your ears, you can, it's been even reported that you can hear the corn grow in the middle of the night on a cornfield. There's a sound. You can hear the sound. It's like, you know, because this vast cornfield and all these corn stalks are growing and you can hear it. I've never heard it, but it's been reported. James Hart said that in the podcast. So, we're very susceptible to sounds and the sounds themselves can alter our breathing rates because if we hear someone else breathing heavily or breathing shallowly, you know, that affects us. So that's kind of interesting. Um, psychics tend to have more theta and delta. And when they're doing their psychic thing, like if you have a psychic that's like closing their eyes and trying to see, you know, a spirit or whatever psychics do, um, or they're concentrating on a tarot reading or whatever, their brain waves measure that they have a lot of theta and delta increase in their brain waves. So you can train in that as well. Not that I would want to, because I have kind of too much of that. So I want to train in alpha to get, you know, back up to alpha and be in that calm alert state. I think I have too much beta and too much theta, but not enough alpha. You know, as my general baseline. Okay. Uh, Electromagnetic fields affect everything we are and do. For example, if you have a frog egg and you fertilize it, what happens is as soon as it's fertilized, the instant it's fertilized, there is a voltage gradient. or It's actually an electric field gradient, which is a voltage difference across the one end of the cell to the other. And that electric field gradient appears along the egg and the spinal cord develops along that axis. So can you imagine what would happen if frog egg or human egg or any mammal's egg was in an electromagnetic environment that was not healthy? That might disrupt the development of the spine, which correlates to the brain and the nervous system of that baby being born. And so it could be that a lot of the neurodiversity appearing today could be due to the anomalies in our electromagnetic fields from electrical equipment that's around us. It's ubiquitous now. And the, the microwaves in the air from cell phones, cell phone towers and our own cell phones that we carry near our ovaries sometimes if you put your phone in your pocket. So it's just food for thought. Brain and spinal cord and nervous system are solely dependent on the proper electric field gradient to form properly. Um, if you have not enough alpha, but you have too much theta and delta in day-to-day -day life, it's correlated with memory loss and confusion. And if you want to cure that, you might consider the brain training for alpha that they do at the Biosabinotic Institute. And you can go other places as well. And you can even buy your own equipment if you're that type of person that wants to learn how to do it. Um, the brain training, if you, you know, design your algorithm properly, 
you can train yourself to slow or reverse alpha loss and you can, by, by alpha loss I mean um, a lot of people as they get older they get less and less alpha and low alpha is correlated with short life, like not very much longer to live. So you don't want to have no alpha, you want to, you know, you want to maintain high alpha brain waves. It's, it has to do with um, proper brain function. It's a state of healthy brain function. So, and I'll discuss that more in a minute. But um, it, the things that um, increasing your alpha, especially if you're low in alpha, if you can increase your alpha brain waves in your brain, you um, profoundly correct your immune function. So if you get sick a lot and you do alpha training, you should see your uh, immune function improve. And that was measured in the form of um, T cell count going from 200 to over 1,000 after doing the alpha brain training. So um, the things that cause your alpha to go down are not known, but uh, there's a few things that are known, but there's probably a lot of other ways that can cause your alpha to go down, like constant stress, for example. That would probably be me. But the uh, prion, that's like a, a toxic protein that comes from, say, cows, you know, bovine cow disease, that's caused by a prion. There's other prions that are foreign proteins that cause havoc in your body. And heating doesn't get rid of them, so you can't sterilize it. It's just there. That's why a lot of people stop eating cow products because of those mad cow disease prions. Um, that can cause uh, less and less alpha and also other brain problems. And um, it could also, brain problems could also be caused by bacteria or mold. And um, that's why a lot of sensitive people or people that are really aware of health and they want to make their lives long um, always, when they do the research, they always end up possibly uh, cutting out dairy. And it's actually been shown that um, prostate cancer is increased for men that continue to drink milk and dairy past the age of 40, I think it is. So um, that would motivate me to consider stopping all dairy, although I don't, I don't imbibe in dairy anymore anyway. So... Uh, except for occasional goat cheese, yeah, so I guess that would be considered dairy, right? But definitely not cows. So, um, this is where we get into the good stuff of our talk. So, too much delta and theta is correlated with memory loss and confusion. And if you um, undertake alpha training, you will find that um, the higher alpha brain waves are correlated with improved stroke outcome, improved tolerance to odors and sounds, and improve hearing. And if you lost your sense of smell, you would improve your sense of smell, your odor detection. Your blood flow to the brain improves when you're in the state of alpha. This is a key point because if you don't have good flow to your brain, you can have many things go wrong. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, bad mood, uh, paranoia, anxiety, etc. So you don't want to lose alpha as you get older. You want to maintain alpha and preferably increase it by training. This would profoundly improve your immune function as well as I mentioned. Now, um, for people that are unfamiliar with the brain biofeedback, you might be more familiar with just general biofeedback. And one of the main cases that is always stated to demonstrate it is if you have your finger temperature connected to the computer, you can cure Renaud syndrome. That's the syndrome where you don't get enough blood flow to your hands and your hands are always really, really cold and blue. And some, in some extreme cases, you have to amputate because you're you're just not getting any blood to your limbs. So if you do biofeedback to train your hands to get warmer, which is correlated with more blood flow to your hands, then you can you can use biofeedback to cure Renaud syndrome. And you know, basically what you're doing is you're learning to activate your parasympathetic 
nervous system, which allows these blood, to, blood vessels to dilate and allow more blood to flow through them. So um, that's a, an example of biofeedback to cure Renault syndrome, which is a very serious illness. So uh, I mentioned also that <laughs> alpha training increases the T cell count, which is correlated with the immune function improving. And a five-fold increase can be seen in the T cell count after alpha training. The cause of too much delta and theta and not enough alpha um, can be many. Um, okay. Poor blood flow to the brain may be the cause. The prion, as in dairy, may be the cause. Could be a bacterial infection, mold infection, and many other causes. So you may not um, like if you have some something like a prion. The alpha training may not cure it, but at least you could delay the development of symptoms by learning how to have higher alpha. Or by doing the higher alpha, you might improve your immune function to a point where it can go in there and fight that bacterial infection that's causing the problem. And in that case, you might cure, your, cure yourself of any brain problems.